So it's been like four months since I've actually bought a new game. Uh, last game I brought was like uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is a fantastic game. Probably the game of the year for me uh, last year. You know, 2020 started where in April. Final Fantasy VII Remake comes out. And I'm like, what Final Fantasy VII Remake? A remake of the notorious game Final Fantasy VII. The critically acclaimed classic Final Fantasy VII. Yes, that Final Fantasy VII. And I was like... Why not? I mean, I love seeing the trailers. It was visually stunning. I love the gameplay. There was so much excitement, so much action going on. I really want to get my hands in this game. Now, at first, you know, I was like, I wanted to get the, my hands in this game. But at the same time, I saw that Cyberpunk was landing almost like at the near date. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to get it because Cyberpunk is coming. But guess what? Cyberpunk got delayed to September 15th. And like, screw it. I'm going to get Final Fantasy VII because we're in quarantine also. It's when I get entertainment I want. I was just super curious to try out this remake. And oh my god, it was like really, really, really good. Probably a little bit better than what I expected it to be. So in this video, I'll be giving like my thoughts about the remake. I, I'm not even kidding. This is my first Final Fantasy game ever. Let's just get right into this review. So the first thing that I want to discuss about the game is the graphics. Now, I get it. Graphics is not everything or whatever, but the graphics definitely did a huge, you know, a huge change because it's been 23 years since the original game. Definitely the original game is looks like Play-Doh looking graphic. But uh, yeah, the graphics here um, in Final Fantasy VII Remake are gorgeous. They're spectacular. I gotta say, I love the rendering of the cutscenes. They look so realistic. There's so many like uh, small touches in here. The vegetation is so gorgeous, so active. It feels alive the grass as well and also when there's some areas like in some chapters where you uh visit uh Ares garden i believe in Ares house the vegetation is so alive it's so green also the water effects are really cool i also like when you go to battles the effects that they uh, that you put like when, when somebody throws you poison you're like uh shooting bullets with barrett you can see the little details of it coming out i think it was pretty nice little touching design that they had there and uh, yeah the lighting also pretty good now for a game that has been really old this game just is phenomenal. They nailed every single aspect when it comes to the graphics. I was saying the lighting is fantastic. They nailed every single aspect of that. And uh, yeah, so next thing I want to cover in here is the characters. And oh my god, it's just, I know there's a huge difference. Because the Final Fantasy VII, like the original one, was all like text-to-speech. I mean, not text-to-speech, but it was all text in the screen. It was like Pokemon, you know? Because Pokemon, there's never been like a voice acting game that I have played, obviously. Final Fantasy VII Remake feels so alive because these characters these voice actors which did a splendid job in here it feels like i'm actually in there in the scene it feels like i'm actually playing as cloud like if i was a character and i love that i definitely like that the voice actors bring so much character and so much life into these characters it feels just really good it feels like supernatural the one the one who does the voice of cloud is a really spectacular job Barrett as well tifa and also bear i think Barrett was probably the best performance this guy nailed the voice but yeah i like how cloud's character over time of the game like his character gets to develop more and more as like from the start the guy was like you know joining avalanche you know for the money because he was paid for it he was hired blah blah blah, blah. but also because it was a favor for tifa because tifa was his friend from like childhood and all that stuff i like how his character develops as i was saying from like just doing it for the money just like you know badass or whatever just doing it for the money super edgy whatever to actually getting more feelings i guess you could say throughout the game and just starting to appreciate uh everybody starting to get a little bit nicer starting to get a little bit of more sense of humor and also another thing i want to point out is i think in chapter 14 or whatever but, but when that thing happened i'm not going to spoil it because there's probably people here that haven't seen i haven't played the game like want to play it, and i'm just doing this review and trying to keep it as spoiler free as possible i definitely do not like watching videos there's spoilers of the games and it's it sucks it completely sucks i've been one of those people who have seen spoilers and i definitely hate that but uh yeah uh definitely i like tifa's character as well as, as i was saying from that scene in chapter 14 or whatever happened and she's like really sad she's really deep in and then cloud like uh tries to comfort her as best as possible like you get to see the, uh, the emotional impact that scenes like that have on these characters and i love that thing it adds so much it brings so much life into these characters as well i also like barrett's character he's a super funny charismatic guy there, there has been so many scenes where i just laughed over some dialogue that he's done and also you can see that he's super super infatuated with saving the planet uh secondary characters like let's say example like wedge or biggs or jesse 
I felt like they could have been developed a little bit more. Barely get to see them in this game for like maybe like a few chapters. Even though Aerith's like uh, character development isn't necessarily anything grave or whatever or her character isn't like amazing. I still like throughout the game she tried to cheer up Cloud because I think that was like pretty funny. There was like some scenes that were so funny with her and all that stuff and just a character at all. It, was, it kind of felt like your typical anime girl or whatever from like anime series or super kawaii or from games or whatever but at the same time you can still feel like she's like super happy and all but also like when you go to like more further like end game world of the path you get to see that her character development is was way just changes a little bit more and probably like chapter 17 so i was saying i'm not gonna spoil anything so i'll try my best her character is a little bit more like deeper i guess you could say more darker and more like a somber and you'll probably see that yourself if you i don't know watch a video like a gameplay video of that chapter specifically or do you just play the game throughout because i'm assuming that's what many of you guys are doing or have done already yeah definitely i love the character development that it had here uh you could definitely see so much changes going on here i love the small little elements of the adding to this character so i was saying the voice actor did a splendid job here voicing the characters feels really alive feels really rich so speaking of about rich the gameplay in final fantasy 7 remake is really really rich so if you go if you were to compare this to final fantasy 7 like the og game definitely there's a huge change because the og game is jrpg you no know, it's like persona 5 gameplay or pokemon gameplay so uh what i like about final fantasy 7 remake is that it's brilliant in how it does its uh, gameplay mechanics because it fuses sort of like the jrpg side because you know you can access potions and all that stuff and you have like these different like i think i guess type of combats and moves that you could do in this game and it just also like like mixes it together with rpg with action and all that stuff and you like feel like you're like, doing attacks you're feeling like you're doing the strong attacks and all it, it just i like the crossover it does it's so smooth it feels like you're actually controlling the the character like in real time and not like in jrpg that it's like timed and that or like you're just just telling them to do the moves and just put the material whatever but in here it's like you're actually doing like the special attacks in here and they can do like the limits you could like the special abilities you could use the material you can do the summons i love how this how square enix you know developed this game's mechanics this game okay, uh, game plays mechanics it's it's really 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 fun to play also speaking about gameplay uh difficulty wise i mean i played it normal that's how i play most of my games or just all of my games because i like to have a decent challenge at the same time enjoy the story i don't like to play in hard or in easy because i feel like in easy mode there's not that much of a challenge it's going to be completely story which i don't mind but i want to feel like a challenge you know i want to be like uh I want to have a balance between challenge and story. And I don't want to go hard mode because that's like emphasizing more in challenge and barely in story. It's not Dark Souls, obviously, because I didn't play in hard mode. But there were like probably like one boss fight, I guess, that it took me like eight tries or something or six. And I was kind of stupid because I just didn't find this weak spot or whatever. But uh, yeah, overall, um, instead of saying that boss that I was fighting, it was like a chapter 7 or 10, I'm not sure. It was a really tanky boss, not gonna lie. That kind of infuriated me a bit. It was like pretty long, it felt stretched out. The I like how each like phase that the boss had, it, it got to get like super hard. They just made me even more frustrated and just harder to, to like fight this boss. I was just like a sweaty tryhard. Final boss in this game had me a little bit disappointed because I'm a little bit underwhelmed because it's like probably took me like two tries to just complete the boss. I don't want to spoil the boss battle either who the boss is. It gives you so much help like throughout the battle. You, you'll see why. It gives you so much help. You get so much support. Even though like it's probably around, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes the uh, boss battle. feels like it's just so easy easy because you got so much support going on it doesn't really feel like a challenge it doesn't really feel like a 1v1 situation that it just takes away the layer of the difficulty of what usual final boss battles have like you're gonna be a, a complete sweaty tryhard and waste all your potions and mega potions and all that stuff it just i just feel like it could have been a slightly harder just slightly harder and also thing i forgot to um add in the characters uh character development thing in the characters is the antagonist which is the Shinra Corporation. There's so many characters in here, which could have been, I guess, explained more. Like the president, like the CEO, like we didn't, like, I, I wish we could see more action between them, more like character development. Sephiroth, which is, I, I can't say it's the main, main villain of the game. So, uh, it's one of the, the villains of the game. The game, like how it begins, it emphasizes more on Shinra, the company. And I guess, yeah, Sephiroth is part of the Shinra thing. But you feel like you're going to fight the CEO, which it, it kind of like gives you that vibe that you are. But 
it's completely opposite and you're not fighting him or fighting somebody else. I kind of felt it was a little bit underwhelming because I was like, just prepared and I was like, are right, you going to fight the CEO? And I was like, because we get to see more parts of the CEO, like just messing with Avalanche with the group, you know, just messing with them and just being like super bad and all that stuff. But the thing is that just Sephiroth just comes like in Cloud's vision, aiming it more on him as a main like antagonist is a little bit, I don't know, just a little bit out of touch, a little bit really, just a little bit random to be honest. I expected, you know, the story to be a little bit more organized. The ending of the, of the game is super confusing i got so many questions about the ending i mean i know there's like videos of it uh, like ign posted a video of it talking about explaining the uh, the ending i haven't seen it yet but still there's like most like many videos explaining the ending but still so i was saying a person like me who hasn't like touched a single final fantasy game or hasn't even played the original you know final fantasy 7 game yeah i'm completely lost you know it was really really trippy i, mean, I don't think this is a major spoiler of the game but it does like leaves off like in a note which it can like expand more. It says like it says in the finale that there's gonna be another game apparently. Pretty hype for the next game. Mostly because I'm I, I'm anticipating and I'm excited because waiting for more content. I originally thought it was gonna be like DLC for this game to expand it. The download file of the game was like around 60 gigabytes or something. I was like, damn, this game is pretty pretty big and really for 33 hours of gameplay for me it took 40 hours because you know including the pause time menus and including the amount of times i've died in boss battle which is regular mini bosses or whatever how many times i died but definitely it's out so for 40 and 40 minutes uh average time is around 33 hours it's a decently nice game a little bit longer like maybe a few more hours longer than your average game but still it's surprising that there is still more material more content for the next game this game is around mid -gear, the place you know where the final fantasy 7 uh, took place at the original one but apparently Final Fantasy VII, like the original one, had more places to go. And I am surprised that it did because the game itself was actually kind of big. But obviously the setting can look a little bit small if we see it in a different point of view. But yeah, I'm surprised that there was still more content for a sequel. And maybe there's going to be a third game. I mean, apparently this game is like a fraction of the original story of Final Fantasy VII. So there's probably going to be more material leading up for other games. It's probably going to be a sequel and then a sequel to that sequel. You know, probably make it a trilogy because it definitely has enough material to carry on to a trilogy. And I believe it does, really. The music in this game is beautiful. It is gorgeous. In different areas when you, like, walk into a place. In different areas where you get to, you get to go to, like, this abandoned wasteland, I guess you could say. You get to hear, like, these elements of like, these Japanese as well, plucky uh, sounds. Like, kind of like, like, har like a harp was playing. A little, this weird sing type of uh, melody kicking in. Take him out. And it's really fast paced. It's really just like 80s type of inspired. And when you get into a battle in that area, the music, the tempo just starts to get like super fast. Like probably in the 160 or higher uh, BPM sort of range. I like how the music builds up when you're in different areas of, in the game. Like when you're fight, it sounds more intense. Working around. It gets a little bit slower, but slightly intense. I like how the music changes in the aspect of the environment that you're in. I think it's a pretty nice small detail that they added here in the game. If I were to give a con to this game, it's probably the side quests. The reason is because most of the side quests in, the, in this game are always so repetitive. It's always like, fetch me this, fetch me that, do this, do that, find this, find that. It's always like the same thing over and over and over and it's so boring to do. And I just always want to go straight to the campaign, straight to the story because it's just more uh, interesting than the side quest itself. I mean, there are barely side quests in this game that are really uh you know interesting from what i've played i can't necessarily you know say that all of them are bad or interesting or are uninteresting but most of the one most of the ones that i've got are just the same thing and the ones that i did are just mostly like the ones that captivated my attention because just keep, keep in mind i'm not a side quest person necessarily i did like probably like five side quests and that was it because the main story always kept me hooked and this side quest that I did were, I guess, quote-unquote, interesting side quests to do. So overall in the game, I loved it. I think Square Enix nailed this remake. Possibly my favorite remake today, and I'm not even kidding with this one. I still haven't played the Resident Evil uh, remake yet, but so far, this is my favorite remake that I've played in a long, in a long time, actually. So of course, a lot of you are infatuated with scores and all that stuff. Me too. What would I give Final Fantasy VII Remake? 
8.5. It is worth every single dime from your pocket. Is this Game of the Year material? Yeah, I, I see this being Game of the Year material, at least a nominee. The Last of Us 2 disappoints, which I don't think it will. Cyberpunk disappoint. Then I think this could be easily like Game of the Year, or at least a contender for Game of the Year. But th this is definitely going to be a nominee, at least a nominee for Game of the Year. That that I can probably assure you. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, I know this is a little bit different, you know, compared to the video to make for my channel. If you guys haven't seen my channel, please subscribe. Please check out my other videos. I do music reviews, talk about albums, topics that are going on. And here, you know, something to talk about gaming, but I don't like, it's not that frequent. I mostly talked about gaming in this aspect because I love the game. I'll probably get back to music reviews soon. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit that like button down below. Subscribe as always. And uh, yeah, turn on the notification bell. Leave it on, please. All notifications, please. And uh, yeah, hope you guys are staying safe during this pandemic. Do not freak out. Stay in your houses. Do not do anything stupid. And yeah, peace out, everybody. Let's go. Ha, I needed some shit with some vibe. Let's go. I flew past the whip with that blood in my mouth. I swear.